Hi everybody, this is Eugene Lisho, and today I'm going to show you how you can use ambient occlusion to help bring uh, textures and uh, sort of get a better look to a point cloud when it's lacking some color. Now, right now I have a point cloud in front of me and I've got lots of color. This actually doesn't look too bad and I'm just going to move this around. Uh, it doesn't look bad at all. But there are times when you are laser scanning something and let's say it's snowing, it's white, it's void of a lot of color or texture. Sometimes it could be uh, from another source and it just doesn't have good color or no color at all. So let me show you how we can use ambient occlusion to uh, uh, bring out some of the texture on an object. Now let's start with this one here. I'm going to clone this by hitting this button up here. So I've got a copy. I don't want to damage the original one that I have. And here you can see I've got some colors and I'm on the RGB uh, color channel. Now there's no other channel here. So if I go none, you'll see that it just looks white. There's It's just showing you points. There's no uh, intensity value. There's no RGB uh, channel on these things. So what can we do if we have something like this? And, or let me just get rid of the RGB channel altogether, altogether here. I'm just going to go to the edit colors and I'm going to go set unique. So I'm going to paint everything white and hit OK. So now my RGB channel is white. So if I had red, green and blue, well, they're all set so that they just give me white. So if you have something like this, it doesn't look very attractive. What can we do? Well, I'm going to select this uh, point cloud here and we're going to use ambient occlusion, which is right over here. So if you hover over it, it says ambient occlusion for mesh or point cloud. You click on that. Now, the idea behind ambient occlusion is that it's going to cast rays, and um, in our case, our model was scanned with a terrestrial laser scanner. It has an inclinometer, um, and it knows which way is up, so my model is oriented properly, so I have this uh, checked here, only northern hemisphere. Now, if you had a model that was possibly rotated differently or wasn't in a proper uh, space, you either move it so that the z-axis is up or uh, you can uncheck this value and then just have it cast rays in different directions. Now the values here where it says the count and also down here the uh, context resolution, uh, the higher these go, the higher quality you are going to get. So the, the model will look brighter and uh, it'll look a little bit more like it has better resolution. So I'm going to start low first because it's faster. So I'm going to use something like 256 and I'll go down here and I'll go to 512. And I'm just going to hit OK. So this is going to process through and it's going to be casting rays uh, all over the model. And it's basically going to show you light and dark areas. So, for example, areas underneath the van that don't get a lot of light are going to get darker and areas which are sort of uh, outward or, or get lighting directly, they're going to be a little bit brighter. But it's going to really bring out a lot of, I'll call it texture in this particular model. So there you go. It's done this and you can see from uh, just a white model, we've gained back a lot of texture. We can see a lot of different things. Now this particular model is a little dark now with this coloring, but it's way better than what I had before. So that's uh, a nice thing you can try. Now I have tried some other settings before. So here's one where I tried the settings at 512 and 512. So I the count was 512 and the render context resolution was 512. So that's not too bad. Uh, it looks about the same as the other. But there's another one that I did where I set everything to 2048. And you'll see that the, I hit this, so I had uh, 2048 and 2048. Now this took a lot longer to render. This took about somewhere between five and 10 minutes, but it brought out a lot of texture and you can see it's a lot brighter. Now, in some cases, uh, if I bring it back the other one here, this one looks pretty good. It has, uh, it's a little dark, but it has good contrast. So you can play with the values and, you know, see what it is that you need to get. And uh, that's what ambient occlusion is. And this is how it can be helpful to you. Thanks.